Skills 2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. WTP web apps. Under WTP web apps, you'll be having a servlet web pro. The if you remember. We copied and pasted the war file somewhere in uh, in your uh, Tomcat in the real, uh, I mean, in the actual uh, structure somewhere here. Okay, here in this case, I don't have to do it uh, automatically. It is going to happen. So in the very starting classes, we saw it that we have put all your information somewhere here. So I put the war file here automatically. The war file got extracted and a particular folder got created here. The same way out here in your Eclipse. Whenever you try to run your server in using your Eclipse, it'd be stored somewhere in your dot metadata dot plugins somewhere in this particular folder. Okay. So you have all the informations out here. All right. Okay. So I was trying to show you uh, the logs. So this is the place wherein all your logs gets stored. All right. So every time anything, any, any activity happens, your log file will be stored out here. All right. Okay, so this is all about filters. You can use it effectively for a lot of other purposes also. Okay, now um, I would request everyone to download one of the uh, plugin, one of the extension which is present in your Chrome, or you can use it in your uh, Mozilla Firefox or in your Internet Explorer also. Here I have used an extension uh, because I want to you I want to check each and every request, how the request goes and how the response comes. Right. So whenever you talk about in HTML, from the HTML, you do a submit. What happens ultimately? You send a request to the server. Now, this HTML is somewhere present in your browser itself. You send a request and you get a response back from the browser itself. Okay. Now, this is a tool. Uh, this is an extension uh, with the help of which you can basically trace those, those kind of uh, linkage. Okay. So, just go to your uh, extensions. Where is my... Ex okay. Just go to the settings. And go to, go to extensions and uh, get more extensions. And just type for live HTTP header. Okay. You can type it in your uh, Mozilla also or in your Chrome also. Or even you get it for your Internet Explorer also. Okay. Let me see if there are any other questions. What happens when it uh, goes to do filter method? Sai Kiran, I think I have uh, answered that thing. Okay. So when you place H tool, is that also not a better inbuilt tool? Uh, okay. So you're saying H tool. H tool basically is only for uh, your your design, okay. So this is a developer tool wherein you can design it, and I think you can still use that for other things. But I haven't used this. I basically use this for designing, okay. Whenever you feel that your alignment is not proper, you can basically use your developer tool here. But I think still you can use this. Uh, let me just check that. Submit. Uh, Okay, yeah, it, this also gives you those things as well. Okay, but very well if you uh, if you're pretty much comfortable with your live HTTP header because this is what I've been using it for a long time. All right, Adil, yeah, thank you. Uh, even I didn't knew. Uh, all right, so here let us go back. Uh, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to give a request here. So Jeram and Ralph. Okay, and if you see right now everything is cleared up. Go to the HTTP live HTTP header. Okay, nothing is here right now. Everything I have cleared here. So when you do a submit out here, let us go back to this particular uh, live HTTP header. Uh, uh, what am I getting is I'm, I'm I you you have sent a request. Okay, and uh, you are getting a response back. 
okay now this is uh, okay so let us go here and let us go here okay now if you see here the request what you have sent is a get request because that's what you have specified in your HTML okay this is what you have specified in your HTML and these are other informations which goes along with your header also okay so what is your host Ho host details and uh, whether it's a text HTML or whatever okay it even gives you a lot of other informations and this is your response code which you got it from your server so that means everything is okay so when you get a response code as 200 that means you have to understand that everything is okay it gives you what what is the length and what is the content type also so it gives a lot of other informations along with it so this is the request which is uh, you send and this is the response what you get okay now So, all right. So we'll talk about okay. I think uh, yesterday's class I haven't spoken about checkboxes. So let's go here right now. Okay. Now <laughs> what is this? Uh, right click properties. Let so we'll, let me just copy this and action is a checkbox. So I think we have got a checkbox out here. And in this checkbox, I'm just saying request dot get parameter of math or physics or chemistry. So let us go back here. Okay. So guys, I mean, just have this. This tool is really handy for each and every time uh, because most of the times you'll be using this for debugging or what, whatever, whatnot. Okay. Now, if you see here, uh, you have used a checkbox out here. Okay, uh, input type equal to checkbox name equal to math, physics, physics and chemistry. Okay, and in the browser, ultimately, it, it you check this, you ch do not check uh, physics and you check chemistry. Okay, and just say select subject. Okay, what's happening here? It is going to the filter, right? So let me just disable the filter out here. clear this okay. so here uh, I think everything is starting uh, started so I just do as enter here right so what happened here it didn't come there one sec from a checkbox you say checkbox here it should come to the checkbox and checkbox should get executed. The URL pattern is also checkbox. What happened here? It hasn't started yet. Do we have download live HTTP? Yeah, we have to download live HTTP at Let me just compile it. Okay, I think everything is fine. Why is it not giving the output to the console? Let me just debug this. Okay. So, okay, refresh and just do a submit. Uh, uh, why is it not coming out here? Sublet checkbox. We'll do one thing. We'll just go this and we'll just remove this target as of now. Okay, we have got a post here. So we'll just get give a get out here. Okay, and I think your checkbox is going to take your get. It doesn't have a post. Oh, it has a post, but we are not doing anything in the post. So that was our mistake. Okay, anyways, uh, go back here, clear this. Hopefully the server has been started. Restart. This is what happens when uh, you copy and paste a uh, couple of things. I used Fiddler to capture the traffic. Yeah, that's fine, Ajit. You can use, there are a lot of other tools 
you can use any of those things okay does this tool also monitor the local eclipse soap request uh, no for soap yeah i think soap request also it will do it uh, unless and until you have some anything in the browser itself okay because it only uh, tries to uh, take up all the requests whichever it comes from your browser itself okay So we can have uh, only one at a time. Do uh, I mean post or get? You can have both the things. You have basically need to chain this up. I didn't chain this up. Uh, I think in the previous uh, classes I have spoken about these things. Okay, I have changed it right now. So this way you can do it. You can have both the things as well. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think. All right. So here uh, mathematics and uh, chemistry has both been selected. Now do a uh, submit. Now if you see here. Uh, my math flag is on, my chemistry flag is on. So what happens whenever you talk about a checkbox, you will get a value as on or off. Okay, it's not on and off. It's, if you if it has been checked, you will be getting a response. Uh, you will be getting a value as on here. Okay, so request dot get parameter of math. Okay, so this is what uh, the checkbox is all about. There are a couple of other examples. I think if you can go ahead and see that, uh, you can understand those things. Okay. Uh, okay, now let us uh, go and check other examples also and understand what all things we can do it using our uh, servlet. Okay, now here this is a direct uh, servlet. I haven't given any HTML associated to that. So this is a direct servlet with the help of which I mean, I can just say with the help of my root context, I can just give this name and this particular servlet is going to pop up accordingly. Okay, so but apart from that, uh, this is what we have already seen it so nothing new in this so here i've done some kind of chaining here okay the only new thing which you can see here is the response dot set init header okay so that means whenever when you try to access this particular uh, servlet okay you get a response now this current time is 8 40 uh, yeah 8 40 uh, pm now this keeps getting refreshed in five seconds now how it is happening the moment you gave a response Right. So who gave a response? If you see this diagram out here, this bad diagram out here. Okay. So the moment you send a request, you get a response back from the server. The moment you get a response back, as you know, it is going to send something in your in the header itself. Okay. So if I clear this up. Okay. Now. The moment I see this, I get something as refreshes five as a response. The moment I see refreshes five, what happens is your browser keep refreshing every five seconds out here. Okay, so this is one functionality. Uh, you can add some information to your browser in order to have some functionality to your browser itself. So that's what I have added my refresh functionality for every five seconds. Okay, so this you can just try that. And here all the same. I mean, I've just taken the calendar here. Uh, this is a, a calendar class which uh, comes under your util package. Okay, so with the help of which you can basically get the information, you can get the date, you can get the hours and whatnot. Okay, so this is also uh, pretty handy. There are different simple date format also wherein you can format your dates as well. So I hope you. I mean, just go through those examples. It, it, those are pretty much handy because every now and then you might be using those utility classes for getting the date or time or uh, you, you want to subtract some date, you want to subtract some, uh, add some dates and whatnot. Okay. All right. Now, uh, okay. Now we'll do one thing. We'll try to have some kind of issues in our servlet. So we want to show some kind of exceptions so how do you i how do i handle the, uh, any kind of exceptions in in my case okay now before that it is very important to understand because let us do one thing let us go back to the hello.html okay and in your hello.html you know it is going to go to your hello form so let me just remove this So that my console does not keep scrolling here. No idea what soap is. Are we going to discuss about it? Uh, soap is uh, Adil. It's it's actually when we talk about web services, we'll talk about uh, soap. Okay. Who did ask this question actually? Adil, Ajit. Okay. 
Ajit asked the question and uh, Adil asked another question here. Um, okay. All right. So now we are going to talk something about exceptions. Right? Now, intentionally, I'll just try to push some junk code in our, uh, in our uh, logic. Okay. Uh, so from your hello form, it is going to go to your hello form, right? So as as you know, from very beginning, I have been using your uh, uh, divided by zero exception, right? So we'll just do some some kind of weird exceptions out here, okay? Uh, but before that, let me just remove a couple of things from the web.xml, okay? And then we will again come back and uh, revisit this one. So just think everything is blank. We haven't done anything on that. You guys can close your eyes also as of now. Let us go back here and restart the server. Okay. In the meantime, let me go to the hello form. Or oh, let me do one thing. Uh, okay, let it be as it is. Okay. So here I'll just say int uh, i equals to 45 divided by zero. Very plain and simple. Okay, let's let's uh, go with this. Okay, there there could be any app, any kind of exceptions. It could be some application exceptions also. Let's say you are trying to get a a, a number, but you got a string. There are lot a lot of issues which you might get it in a real time also. Okay, but ultimately you have to handle those kind of exceptions for us. Okay, so go back and just say HTTP localhost 8081 servlet web pro and hello.html all right so this is your page and what happens the moment you submit this page it ultimately goes to your hello form.java right that's what we have been seeing from the very beginning submit this the moment you submit it you know that you will definitely get an exception that is your runtime exception that is your arithmetic exception you can very well uh, basically handle these exceptions but i want to show you in particular that if what happens basically if any exception comes up in picture okay in that too you have got your separate exceptions out here okay that means your do get method might throw your separate exceptions or it might throw your i exceptions also okay now uh, this is what you see this is the one you see it in your logs in your console. The same thing you see, but in a very short way. Okay, that's it. Doesn't it does not print all the informations out here, but it does print some information and it says the status is 500. Okay, so why it is 500? Whenever there is an internal error, so when when we say 200, okay, uh, that means everything is okay. That's what we saw, right? So if you go to the HTTP header, now if you see you got something like 500. Okay, that means something is wrong with your, with the response of your server. Okay. Now, whenever you get 200, that means if something is everything is good. So, whenever you get four four not uh, four zero four, that means your file not found. That means uh, when you're trying to, if you see in this authentication filter, if you in let's say I'm going to say here as login.html. Now, my login.html is nowhere present in my entire uh, project. So, in that case you're trying to access a file which is not present. Okay, in that case, you will say file not found. Okay, so there are different statuses. If you open your uh, status code dot uh, this already have been I have checked in. You just check out this particular uh, project. You can see status codes dot XLS. I mean the Excel uh, spreadsheet. You can just open, open this and see a lot of other status codes which you can use it handily. Okay, in, in in your project, I mean, if there is an application as Ajax. Uh, with the help of that, you can basically you want to know what are the status codes you are getting it. Okay, we will not be covering those things, but again, just to tell you, give you some information, you will be using these kind of uh, statuses sometime or other. Okay, now here in this case, you see 200 is okay, and uh, we we have already spoken about four not four. That is a file not found. And we are going to discuss about your 500 that is our internal server error. So that means something went wrong in your server itself. Okay. Now clear this up. So I know something is wrong here. So my main objective is not to show you that something is wrong here. My main objective is to show you how to handle these kind of exceptions to for us. Okay. 
Now go back to your hello form. Let me just delete, uh, remove all these things. Okay. Now I got some exceptions out here and ultimately something uh, weird got printed out here. Let's say uh, in the real time you So go back again, copy this. Okay. Now let's say for example, um, I am giving your name, last name and your age. Three things I need. And I do not have any kind of client side validation. So when I say client side validation, I do not, uh, I'm not stopping anyone to add any kind of junk data. Okay. And age. So this is a text, no doubt. So I'll just say age. Okay. So this is kind of a real time scenario wherein uh, you might come up with these kind of issues. So my objective is uh, take the first name, take the last name. Okay. Or let's do one thing. Let's say, uh, I want to say depending on your age divided by two. Okay. This should be your height. So this is my actual logical calculation. Okay. So my age, so what should I do here? I will just say request dot get parameter of age. Okay. So this is my hello.html. I have got uh, the name as age. So that's what I'm going to use it out here. Okay. I know that uh, this particular age is of type integer. Okay. Because when you talk about age, you will uh, you will only enter integer. You will not try to enter any any kind of other other values. Okay. So here I will say here as uh, int age equals to so and so. Okay. Now as your request dot uh, get parameter. Okay. What the return type of your request dot get parameter is your string. I want to convert this particular type to an integer. So I'll just basically say integer dot parse int of a string. So this takes a string out here. Okay. So I get the age. So the ideal height is uh, something like the age divided by two. Okay. So copy this and see it's very, very difficult for me to uh, type in anything and make sure that the HTML files are up properly formatted. Okay. So I just give here as uh, your height should be this one. Okay. Plus I think everything is fine. All right. Okay. So your height should be this much. Now go back to my hello.html. Everything is fine. So go back here and go back to this. And refresh this. Okay, now you got first name, last name, and age. Okay, All right. And just do a submit out here. All right. It says your height should be 15. All right. No doubt. I mean everything is fine now over here. Now let's say by mistake I uh, gave uh, 30 or any any kind of junk data. I do a submit out here. You get something like number format exception because here ultimately in your application what you're trying to do is you are trying to get a string, no doubt. And you know that your string is of some number and you're trying to say integer dot, you're parsing that particular number to an actual integer by saying integer dot parsing. But here in this case, you cannot parse a particular string to a particular number because you know it is a number, okay? So in that case, you we basically end up into some kind of exception, okay? Now the exception is so weird for me, even if I'm a computer guy, I understand. Let's say my uh, my grandparents try to access this particular website. I have already hosted this particular website, okay? They know how to uh, read English, right? They do not know anything about Java, right? When they see what is this number format exception, I don't even understand about any, anything about it, right? So you have to handle these kind of exceptions appropriately, all right? Either you can divert your page to some other page also, Okay, uh, by giving some meaningful message saying that uh, please enter your age properly or whatever it is. Okay, now that's what we are going to see right now. Right now, here in this case, if you see your web.xml, uh, 
I commented a couple of things, okay? 